Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Shiloh Pentecostal Holiness Church this Sunday morning. What a beautiful day that the good Lord has given us. And today has a little special ringtone to it, I'd say. Not only are we praying and uh, it's our desire for our Lord to spend some time with us, and we pray that He will stay and, and eat dinner with us. You know, a lot of times when He was here, He was, he was uh, walking from town, uh, city to city, and uh, sometimes His disciples would, uh, you know, ask Him, uh, you know, you want something to eat, or someone would be trying to feed Him. Well, we pray today that He will sit down because we've got a table prepared for Him. And that He will, uh, will break bread with us and, and uh, just bless the food, the fellowship, what our intent is for. And that is to give Him honor and praise today. We, uh, on this Sunday morning, uh, you know, we're, we have homecoming uh, today. And I, I go back and sort of reminisce of the previous homecomings and how things have changed, but it's still all about the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I always say, it's so good to see you this morning. We're doing this uh, uh, Monday message on this Sunday morning, but we're praying that that come Monday morning, if it's the Lord's will, that we will be able to touch that one that the Father has intended to be listening and hear of the words that I will speak that He has given me. And I pray not to miss a word, leave a word out that is so important in what He has given me because it can be that of importance for that to hear and I'm going to silence this cell phone here right quick I forgot I had it I don't want any interference thank you I'm sorry for that but I want to get into the message right away here because on the way down he, he had me to change what I wanted to title uh, was going to be, I, I said uh, my first title was Run to His Hand. But then on the way down here, as I was talking with him and just going through some things, you know, he said, I've already been there. Because I was talking about the trials and things that we face here, and sometimes we feel like we just can't bear the load. Sometimes we feel like it's just too much on us to try and change our life from the way we're living to a life that would be pleasing to our Lord and Savior. But it only it seems that way because we try and be influenced by that one that is in control of our life at the time that we're contemplating changing over. But as he told me, he says, I've already been there. And that's the name of my title. Now, He's already been there. He's already been where we're at in our life today. Due to the fact He took on flesh and went through the suffering and the, 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 the neglect of others and abuse that's a lot of times that we face in our walk of life. But He, is, he took it to the ultimate. He, he went above and beyond taking what was intended or should have been intended for us. He's already been there and done that and been through it. Let us pray. Father, I thank You this morning. I thank You for this lovely day that You've given me. But more importantly, Father, the Word that You have given me to express to those that are going through some things this morning. That they've tried to be joyful through the week and as we spoke on our last Monday message. They've tried to change, but we know that every time that we go about changing in our life, that the temptation picks up on us. The suffering picks up on us. The darks 
uh, 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 multiply that are thrown at us when we're about changing for the good. But Father, you're here to let us know that we can endure whatever comes our way if we call on you. And Father, that's what we're doing this Sunday morning. And I pray that it'll reach that one. That feels like, what's the use? I'll go back to being a whom I was. But it felt good as I was working on the process of changing over. Father, I pray that it touches that individual today and he'll, he'll find the spirit and the willpower to pick up the pace and follow you. He show grace, mercy, and blessings that I ask for this morning in the name of Jesus to our Father. I want to say amen and amen and amen. He's already been there. The feeling to work and to achieve or own can be a great feeling. We see relay races, but just visualize Jesus being your last leg, anchor, and He grabs your hand to the finish. This is the approach we should be looking on how we want to finish down here. And I want you to stop and think about that. How, how do you want to finish down here? Because how you finish down here running this race is going to determine where your destination is. Is it going to be filled with excitement? No more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no more losing of a loved one. Is that going to be your rest and your joy? Or is it going to be in damnation, torment? It's going to be one of the two. But by us having a choice of what He did so many t years ago, that He took our burdens and our sins and put them upon Him and went to the cross so that we would have a choice to be able to make heaven our home. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, 2, and 3. I've read this two or three times and I, I just tried to break it down because of time but I really want you to just go back and, and, and read these first three verses for sure. Chapter 12, verse 1 says this, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnarls us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. In other words, let us not uh, let us not feel like I don't want to. Let us make it worthy to be with Him by picking up the pace, getting that second win, not not looking left and right or back or backwards. Keep forward. In verse two, looking up looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That is verse 2. That was His desire. Is to go ahead and do the will of His Father, save us from having to go through what He went through, and when it was all finished, he could go back and hold his head up high, sitting at the right hand of his father, and, and knowing that his father was proud of what he achieved and done for those. But now his father wants to see what we've done with what his son did for us. Verse 3, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. Just got done talking. Don't go left and right. Don't look back. Get that second win when you get tired. Where it says weary here, when you become tired, get that second win. 
don't get discouraged in your souls. Because Jesus Christ is the source and perfecter of faith. He is of faith. Believes, believers should keep their eyes on Jesus. Lay aside, rebuke anything that tries to get in your way. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus if you feel like it's holding you back. It's feel, and when you feel like it's taking the wind out of the sail, so to speak. Pick up the pace. Because there's nothing that we can tell and tell Him of what we went through or going through that He won't say, I've already been there. What I went through, it would be three times harder than what you'll ever face here on this earth. But there's three times harder of what you will endure if you don't accept me as your Lord and Savior, if you take your last breath here without me being your one and only Lord and Savior. That is where you go going to endure as much, if not more, than what I had to bear because I lived and I had a I had a, a a glorious life awaiting him where he could sit on the right hand of the throne of God, his Father. But if we don't accept him as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we got a destination of sitting in the lake of fire. Where the fire never quenches, where it never goes out. Well, we'll never see joy. We'll never see the light of day. But with Him, we can see what He died for. Us and to give us because His Father had prepared for us to be with Him. That was His desire. I want to go to Isaiah here, chapter 40, if I can, because we're still talking about the reward of what it would be like when we make heaven our home. And the closer that my walk becomes with my Lord and Savior is that I'm getting excited. And I'm looking at it more when I'm having those times of that thorn being in my side and it seems like it's growing. When things seem to be escalating in the wrong way. I seem to be getting excited about what he's talked about, where he's at, and what is up there waiting for me. But in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says this, But those who wait... On the Lord shall renew their strength. You see, I said that it would be in the last leg of the anchor. I'm going to go a step further. He has a worker running with us during the race. He can just speak in existence and the race will be over. It will be won. And the victory will be ours. But in the meantime, he's standing at the finish line. But he has people encouraging you along the way. He is seeing people your way to encourage you. Don't give up. Get that second wind. Breathe harder. Rebuke what's coming your way. Because if you look, I'll be at the finish line. When you start getting close to having me to come into your life, you'll start getting a vision of me being at the finish line. When the doctor says they've done all they can do for you, if you start looking a little closer, you'll start seeing me at the finish line. And when it's time, victory will be yours. But finishing up on verse 31, it says, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Oh, thank you, Lord. They'll mount up 
with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And you'll not be tired. Just got done reading in Hebrews a word. Don't be weary and don't be discouraged. And over here in Isaiah t- telling us again, they shall run and not be weary. You shall not, you shall run and not be weary. If you get tired, you have that second wind because he'll send someone to help you if he doesn't come on his own. They shall walk and not faint. You'll keep on keeping on as, as the song says. Keep on keeping on because victory is going to be ours. Victory is coming and joy is coming in the morning. Whatever that morning may be when he said it's time, it'll be time. But I want to go here to 1 Peter chapter 5. I want to go to verse 10 and 11. So that I'll be finishing up, closing with this, because I want you to understand what you think you're going through. What you, and I know that there's some that have gone through some issues that they seem, Lord, I just seem to, to not be able to carry on. I don't know how much more I can handle this. Whatever your circumstances may be. But as Job had gotten to the point where he just couldn't understand why he was having to go through all of this. He would love to just be able to ask our Lord and Savior, why is he having to go through all of this? He don't understand it. And there is others that seem like they're going through more than what others are. Well, that's the just and the unjust. I see people mowing the grass in a beautiful home that they've got and everything, and I look upon it, and I used to look at it in a different way, but I look at it now that sometimes we can prepare and have something here that if we're not careful, that is the only thing that may even resemble uh, God giving you a pleasure to be able to live in. But you've you're enjoying it in the wrong manner. I would say, get prepared to come to a house of worship and give them the praise for being able to, for you to be able to provide with your family by Him providing for you, giving you the health and and all to be able to enjoy something of that nature. I look at it; they're they're going about it in the wrong manner of being appreciative of what they got. I, I, what I've got, you can't see that He's given me. What all I had and I saw, it's not nowhere near worth what I've got that He's given me inside of me. And I want you to feel that he's, you still got what He's given you if you're a child of His and you're going through and, and your situations today, you've been dealing with them. You've been suffering over them. But He's telling you to get your second win. Endure this race that you're running here. I know it don't seem like it to you, but I've been through three times, maybe more than that, than you are going through right now. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to win. I'm here to tell you, tell you that all that is going to be over with one day. I'm here to tell you that joy is going to come to you in the morning. One of those mornings you're going to wake up in glory. I'm telling you, just hold on. But in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, it says this, But may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, He has called us through His Son, Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a a while. Oh, thank you. Just got done talking about the suffering that we're going through. Go and go through while we're here. Perfect. Establish. Strengthen. And settle you. Establish. Strengthen. And settle you. And in verse 11, to Him be the glory 
and the and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Keep your eyes on the prize, brothers and sisters. Those that are, are lost this morning and haven't decided of, of making the change in their life that that they want the 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 glory of heaven, the feeling of being in heaven. We can't go even imagine what it's going to be. But as that song says, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and look upon His face and look upon His face and thank Him for choosing you, giving you an opportunity to turn your life around, saving you from the pits of hell and the fire in the lake of fire because He never designated it for you for it to be your home. That is, that is reserved from that individual that is keeping you, trying to keep you from changing your life this Monday morning. But you have the inspiration, you have the spunk, I'm going to call it, to tell him no. No, no longer will I serve you, the father of all liars. I found a man that has nothing but goodness set for me. And I'm on my way to get what he has in store for me. If, you're, if you are wanting to receive, start receiving some of those goodness, I would encourage you to find you a house of worship. If you don't have a house of worship, we have one here at Shiloh Pentecostal Holiness Church, 2271 Ultra Mill Road, Godwin, North Carolina. We have some of the material that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has in store for us and for you. We have it here. You can, you can get your, your package, so to speak. But then as you walk by and you've got everything that you feel like you need, and then, then our Lord and Savior looks upon that package that you have, that package that you've got on the inside of you, and He places His hand upon you and say, Job well done, my good and faithful servant. Oh, it makes it all worthwhile. Where He says, where He stands in, in, in front of you when His Father says, what have you done with my child? You'll be ready. Go ahead and tell Him. Go ahead and tell Him, Jesus. Go ahead and tell Him. Be confident in what, you, what Jesus will have to say about you. Stand up and be proud. I served you as you would want me to serve you, Lord, to the best of my ability. We love you here at Shiloh. We look forward to seeing and, and being a part of that package. If you, if you cannot come to where we at, go to our Facebook page. Go to YouTube. Apply, apply for the Shiloh prayer request form. Send me your praise. Send me your prayer request. I'll take it to the altar. A pastor does not have an unlisted phone number. Call him if need be. We love you here, Shiloh, and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you, and have a blessed Monday. Lord's will. Amen and amen. Thank you.